Good evening everyone. Today I am just removing some of our existing backyard fence that separates the backyard from the field. I'm doing that so that I can free up some of the T posts and create a temporary fence that protects our arborvita from the sheep. If you saw my Instagram stories the other day, you'll know that they started eating our freshly planted arborvita, the arborvita we put in just this past May, and they started munching on it just a couple weeks ago, and we are trying to protect it to make sure that that can continue to grow as a privacy hedge. So I'm creating a temporary fence to block off the sheep access to that area, and I'm removing the existing fence so that I can have enough T-posts to do that. I thought I would bring you along and show you the process and all the hard work that goes into things like this. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. All right, it's another day of chores around the property and I have found that I really enjoy doing it while I'm filming. Even though filming does make it last a little bit longer because I'm moving the camera around, it's really nice to see the before and afters and to share it with everybody. So I actually have found that I prefer it this way and then it goes quicker mentally for me doing it with the camera rolling. I also want to shout out to this green sun shirt because I bought that off Amazon for about 30 bucks and this thing is wonderful because it's long and it covers your backside while bending down. This riveting shot of me unwiring this wire fence is brought to you by multiple previous owners who have layered the fence repeatedly over the years. As of right now, in that back corner, what you're seeing is three layers of fencing. When we bought the place, it had five layers of fencing and I took down two of them because the wire fences were so degraded that they got in the way of mowing. So I just took those down pretty quickly after we moved in. You'll also see me with this bucket. This bucket is a lifesaver when doing fencing of any kind because you have a lot of spare wires and a lot of spare pieces of metal. And this bucket just catches them so that we are not stepping on them and the animals aren't stepping on them and they aren't getting tangled in our equipment. Okay, that's pretty funny. When I bend down, I basically get consumed by the black sun hat. I think I look pretty funny that way, and maybe I should have named my channel Black Hat Gardening. It's Ammon Acres now, so it is what it is, but that's pretty iconic for me because I just wear my black hat out all the time, whether I'm in the garden or I'm in town. I take my sunscreen and my skincare very seriously, so this black hat is a part of me. First fencing panel down, gotta celebrate those small victories. That's what keeps me going throughout these projects and allows me to continue to make progress even when things like this with the livestock panel, the fencing panel being suctioned into the ground by decades of grass and dirt that have grown through it. Walter being ever casual as he wanders off into the field. He does it quietly and stealthily. He does it really slow so that I don't notice. So you'll see me throughout this video doing exactly what I just did, which is looking around confused or looking around as if I am searching for something. It is generally Walter who is off being a naughty beagle, following his nose to greener pastures, or in this case, browner pastures. This fencing project is taking down fencing that we've wanted to take down for a while. It's going to be leveled and smoothed out and we're going to put the fencing panels that are currently there up in the temporary area to block the sheep from the arborvita. So I'm taking off all the grass here so that I can reuse this fencing panel in the new area. We are through with the three layers of fencing. I am now down to just one layer of wired fencing and that makes my progress a lot quicker from here on out. I was really appreciative that that three layers of fencing didn't go all the way down. Unfortunately, with wire fencing, even if it's left above ground initially, Oftentimes the ground will build up, whether you don't bag your grass or, or add mulch, something about the ground will build up and consume that bottom wire of the fence and that will erode it away and then you're left digging up that last final wire if you don't want to leave it in your landscape. And you will see me doing that here repeatedly throughout the video. Also, I just have to point out that this Rose of Sharon I put in the ground earlier this spring is having a moment in this video. I love seeing that giant pop of pink. It's so vibrant. I love seeing it on this video and when I look out back. I am 
telling you that bottom wire on wire fencing is the worst part of removing old wire fence. It just sticks in the ground and it tears off the rest of the fence so you're left digging just for that one wire and trying to make sure that you get it all and that is really frustrating. So it's much more satisfying to watch on the video than it is to do in real life. I love seeing how inviting the shady yard is with its green grass and I cannot wait to establish that out on the south side of the field where I'm currently standing. I know what is coming up next in this video and I just want to get out in front of it and apologize to all the tool aficionados for the abuse and misuse of this screwdriver that I bring in right here. I'm sure it would hurt my husband's heart to see me do this to our screwdriver, but you know what? Sometimes you need to just use the tool that's at your disposal and that is exactly what I did. One of the advantages of having all of this footage fast forwarded or sped up is that you can't see my clumsiness. I actually tripped over that short fence stake post and it didn't really show up when everything was fast forwarded and that was helpful. And here I am tracking down Walter once more while Sadie is being a good girl and staying in the yard even though there's no fence anymore. I am curious about this area of our fence. It looks like it used to be a gate, but ever since we've been here, it has just had that panel of fencing in between the two posts, but it would be really handy to have a gate there for the last four years. So I'm curious why that was removed at some point. And the hat comes off. I guess the other channel title I could have used or channel name I could have used is the Nighttime Gardener because that is the only time my hat ever comes off. Notice this until I was watching the video play back but Walter right here is hovering around my blueberry bush and he is looking for the last remnants of fruit this season he's even smelling it he's looking to pick over the plant what a little pill he's so cute but he's a pill several wire fences during our time here, I am not a fan of them. I understand their use and we have used some wire fencing for our sheep, but oh my gosh, I much prefer removing the paneled fencing. It's easier. You can also generally reuse it, so that is likely what we'll be using for most of our permanent fencing on this property when we redo everything. It's so interesting what you can observe on video versus what you notice in the moment because for instance on this particular moment of the video you can see our fence move dramatically in the wind and I do know that it is fairly unstable in real life all the time and that is because the previous people who installed the fence probably about 20 years ago didn't do it properly and so the wooden posts are actually rotting off in the ground and it's being held up by a hope and a prayer at this point. Our plan is to redo all the fencing, including moving some fence lines within the property within about a year or two, but watching it play back on the video with our fence moving dramatically, I'm thinking maybe we should do it a little sooner. And just a PSA for anybody out there who is looking to work with old wire fencing or new wire fencing, wear some sort of eye protection. That is why my sunglasses are now on even though it's dusk. This old wire fencing had a lot of wires poking out and I just didn't want my eyes in jeopardy. Good morning everyone. Today is day two of the fencing project. Yesterday I finished it about dusk when I took all the panels off and all the wire fencing off and I didn't remove the posts, the T-posts, um, or put up the new temporary fence because there just wasn't enough time, there wasn't enough light. So I'm finishing it up today and I am bringing you along with me, but I just wanted to explain why you'll see me in a different shirt today. All right, let's go. You guys ready to go? All right, let's go outside. Let's go outside. Go on, little bean. Go 
do this, I guess I'll first take you on a tour of what I have done so far. So yesterday what I did was remove all of the fencing off of these T-posts all the way back and then today I'm going to remove these T-posts and then put that temporary diagonal fence here and that will protect our arbovita from the sheep and the sheep will still have field privileges back there. So I thought I would bring you along for the rest of the project. The ultimate irony of this moment is I was feeling lazy and that's why I was using a shovel rather than going to get the tractor out of the shop. I just didn't want to embark on using the tractor because it felt a little more involved. But the shovel is so much harder, so I was doing it what I thought was the lazy way, but it's actually a lot harder, so that'll show me. Eventually I did go get the tractor out of the shop because they just weren't budging with the shovel. Zoom! I guess that's what tractor racing would look like. <laughs> For anyone that is watching this as a how-to for removing fence posts, first off, my sincerest apologies. Secondly, the way we do it is we have a chain that is on one of our forks from the tractor and we wrap that chain around the post. We put vice grips above the chain so that it can't pull off of the post. And then we lift the fork lifts and that just lifts the post right out of the ground. It's really easy and simple. I'm just less inclined to go get the tractor if I can do the job with my bare hands. Am I the only one that is just hyper fixated on that Rose of Sharon? Is it just me or is there anyone else out there who is looking at that beautiful burst of pink thinking, what tractor? Because that is what I'm currently doing while I watch this, this video. so mind-blowing to me to see the difference between the field and the yard. Like I feel like our yard is oftentimes very brown, but now seeing it right next to the field with no fence in between, I feel pretty darn good about our lawn this year, especially considering we have to water it with a sprinkler by moving it, moving the sprinkler around individually to each spot. You may also be wondering about some of what appears to be dead sticks poking out of our lawn. Those are in fact dead sticks. They are failed attempts at a lilac transplant from the front yard. They actually did really well last year and then just as they were starting to bloom out this spring we got a very heavy rain and it flooded that, that whole area and it waterlogged their roots and so they died and I was very sad so I have to pull those out of the ground. This might be my favorite part of the entire project of removing the fence posts. These look mighty sturdy and I was prepared to find them cemented into the ground, but instead what I found was that with a little bit of digging, a little bit of twisting and turning, I was actually able to lift them out of the ground just with my bare hands, no tractor, no nothing, just lift them straight out of the ground, which made me wonder how sturdy the gate that they were once supporting actually was, or if it just perpetually flopped over and that's why they put the cattle panel up and took out the I love how Sadie is just laying there. She's completely at ease as I work around her. It has no care in the world, no desire to move. She's just happy to lay right there, right in the center of the action. You'll also see that I am backfilling these holes once I pull the posts out. That's because they did leave a pretty deep hole and I didn't want us or our animals to step in it, so I just backfilled it with all the dirt that I pulled out. This moment is a pretty good representation of how I work. I have ADD and so I was moving those T-posts over to where the new fence line will be. I got distracted by the tractor being in the way and started to move the tractor and then I noticed that there was another one of those round fence posts in the ground and I got off the tractor to check how sturdy it was. Then I went back to moving the T-posts. That all seems about normal for the way I work. This 
This one came out even easier than the other two, and I really do wonder about what the fence lines used to be like on this property before we bought it, or even before the last owners had it. There's some confusing stuff here, and I just want to know what the history is. You'll also see me move these T-posts multiple times. I left it in here because I think it's important to know that not everything works out perfectly the first time. A lot of the time, I have to redo things. It's also because I don't always plan it out very well and that is my fault, but here I am trying to plan it out because I'm using the extension cord to create a straight line. It's not currently straight, but I will pull it straight once it's secured to the other end. And that allows me to make sure that the fence posts are as straight as possible. Even though it's a temporary fence line, I still don't want it to look overly wobbly or unsightly. Those blackberries behind me are 100% wild. They have exploded in the last couple of years because our neighbors next door redid their drain field and now our blackberries get a ton of water from that drain field and they have just exploded. So next summer my chore is to maintain those a little bit better, cut them back and allow us to have space to continue that Arbovita privacy hedge. You'll also see my husband giving me some pointers Fun fact, this is my very first fence to do all on my own, and so he's helping me kind of plan it out and figure out how to use that fence pounder, that fence post pounder. That fence post pounder is not a commercial one. It is one that was made by my husband's maternal grandfather, and it weighs about 40 pounds. So I'm lifting 40 pounds repeatedly above my head in an awkward fashion, and that is why you see me using my whole body every time I am doing this. And this is the exact moment that I realized I have to pull that post that I just pounded into the ground back out because we decided to use panel fencing instead of wire fencing and that requires a different uh, support system. So instead of every 10 to 12 feet, it's every eight feet for a fence post. So I'm pulling it back out and there's a little bit of frustration when that happens after you put that much work into something, but it's better to figure it out now rather than when we have a dozen of these in the ground. So I'd rather have it happen that way than the other way. So now I am just using an eight foot long board to space out all of my fence posts and create that even spacing that we need for fence panels to work in this area. Look at me struggle to get that fence post pounder up on top of it. That is just hilarious. I don't know how I managed to do this for a dozen posts, but I did and I'm mighty proud of that. I am also putting in some noise canceling earbuds right now. That fence post pounder is really loud as it tings on the metal with each hit. So I just popped in my earbuds, turned on some tunes and pounded away on these fence posts. Full body style, of course. is looking for an intense summer workout for your arms and really for your full body as you can see from this moment I have some fencing that I would love for you to come over and help me put up for the rest of the property because it will give you a full workout Even with the straight edge guide of the extension cord, I still occasionally would need to look around and make sure that my post that I'm pounding in lines up with the others. As you can see right here, this one didn't, so I had to pop it back out and try again. This orangey glow is from the wildfire smoke that has rolled in in the last few hours of this video. I also took several hours off and helped my husband with sighting and my camera battery also died so I just took that time off and did other parts of the project and then came back to this in the early evening so that also accounts for what you're seeing in the difference in lighting. If you are an eagle-eyed observer as well you may notice that I have different gloves on that is because my hands started to get a blister. The gloves I was wearing were gardening gloves and so they had a rubber 
palm of my hand and those clung to the post as I was pounding and so my hands were moving in the gloves and causing friction. And this is day three as you can see from my new outfit. I ended the day, the second day, with this post that I'm currently struggling with because it hit a rock and I got the post pounder stuck up top because I wasn't tall enough or strong enough to get it off so my husband came out to help me problem solve that and get that post in the ground. And of course our dogs are also always around to help us and I love that. I love seeing them in the video around us and wanting to be with us pretty much throughout the day. That makes my heart happy. And there I am making fun of how differently we drive in fence posts and how mine is a full body action maneuver. And now I am flying solo once more, but not before my husband gives me what we call a hat kiss with my large wide brimmed hat. He has to fold back the brim in order to give me a kiss when I'm out doing field work. And I love those moments because they just make us closer and we can still find joy in each other even when we're working on challenging projects like this. Okay, that is a really tall fence post. From this perspective, it is much taller. It felt really tall in person, but watching the playback, I feel like that is way above my head, and I'm mighty impressed that I did that. So, go me. Our property is pretty uneven, and in this particular spot, there was just one small mound that needed to be handled because paneled fencing does not contour to the landscape as well as wired fencing. So I'm just using a shovel to dig down and create a flat level surface for the panel fencing and the post to sit on. I find it very entertaining to watch me dig because we have clay in our area. The Willamette Valley is full of clay and in the summer that clay turns to concrete. So I am digging more or less in concrete and despite my efforts I'm just coming up with these little tiny chunks of earth as I dig with all my might. Look at how straight those fence poles are. That is pretty impressive. For my first fence I am really proud of myself. I also dislodged where my fencing spacing was during my digging, so I had to go pick up my measurement stick that's eight feet long and measure it from the other pole so that I made sure that the fence post is dug in the right location. You may notice that I'm taking more breaks during this fence post pounding than any other, and that is because I am tired. My arms are sore, my back is sore, my shoulders are sore, even my legs are sore. It really was my full body effort to get these into the ground, and so by the end, I was taking a lot more breaks and just taking a few more breathers to catch my breath and save my energy. We made it to the last fence pole. Oh my gosh, or fence post. I guess I've been calling them poles, but they're posts. And I was so excited about this. The adrenaline and the excitement of almost being done with the hardest part of this project really drove me to get this stake in the ground or this post in the ground. Pronto, I did not want to take any breaks. I just wanted to get this in the ground and I did. And I'm so proud. Everything looks so good. These panels are from the area of fencing that I already took down. We're reusing them. Fencing is pretty expensive and so it's always smart to reuse them, especially for areas that are temporary fencing like this. My arms were so tired at the end of this that it took considerable effort just to hold this extension cord with my hands and I eventually ended up looping it around my arm because I just didn't have the strength. The hard part is done. All the posts are in the ground. All we have to do is go buy five panels and here they are. So we bought five panels and they are taller than these two that we're reusing. And that's because we will use these five panels elsewhere on our property when we take this fence down. And again, you can see the animals follow us with each trip, with each panel that we go back and forth, so do the animals, and I think that's so cute. I love that. It frustrates Ian sometimes because they can be underfoot, and I get that, but for me, it makes me really happy to see how close they are to us. 
gotta have that trusty bucket. I am telling you, tool belts are out. Home Depot orange buckets are in. Because this is a temporary fence, we weren't overly interested in making sure it can withstand the test of time. We just needed it to be good enough so that the sheep, if they laid against it, wouldn't bring it down. So we were wiring it to the existing fence and then we were also using these clips to clip it to the posts. I loved using the clips once I figured out how to, how to use them, but getting them out of the bag was like that old game of barrel of monkeys where you try and get as many monkeys connected together at once when you pull them out. If that were the game with these clips, I would have won. The entire bag came out every time I tried to just pull one out. So that was a little bit interesting to work with, but they worked out really well in terms of getting the fence on quickly, so I'm grateful for that. I am also grateful that in this sped up video, you can't see how clumsy I was with all of the clips. I was dropping them constantly and having to reach through the fence to pick them up. So I'm grateful that with the sped up video, you can't see that and it just looks a little more fluid and smooth. Okay, I took the opportunity to shower because that was hot sweaty work. But now I'm gonna let the sheepies out and that is the best part of what this project is for. So let's go do that. Sheepy time! We are going to go let them out and give them their freedom back. They haven't had it for about two weeks now. So this will be, this will be a big moment for them. I have a little bit of a bet going on with my husband that they might just go to the remaining grape leaves. I, I um, trimmed back our grapevines and gave them the grape leaves and they loved it. So we'll see where they go. Hi guys. There they are. Ready to come out? Are you ready? Hi Mr. Burton. Okay. This is the first time out in the field in about two weeks. Let's see. What do they do? Are they so excited? Oh, they did. They went straight to the grape leaves. Ha! Huh, I won. <laughs> They're all crunchy and old and there's barely any left. But that is what they want, the grape leaves. Alright, let's go over and look at the fence. I'll show you guys all the work that was done and give you one final look-see. Okay, here it is. I did it. I did all of that by myself. Well, my husband helped with one, one post and helped get the the post pounder off of another when I got it stuck. But yeah, I did all of that. And I am pretty darn proud for my first fence. That actually looks pretty good. <laughs> it's not perfect. And it's nice to learn on a fence that I know will be temporary because then if it's not perfect, I can still um, leave it up and it'll be good enough for, you know, that six months to a year. But yes, I'm done. It's finished. The sheep are out enjoying themselves. But yeah, did it so thank you so much for coming on this journey with me because it was a lot of work and I love sharing it and I love seeing it and I love having that documentation that I did this that's pretty exciting so until next time I hope you enjoyed this video if you did like and subscribe